Hi, and welcome to Cuisine Secrets. I'm Chef Julie Hardigan. The world of chocolate making is truly a blend of art and science. Ask any home baker who's tried to melt chocolate only to have it seize up into a dry grit. When we come back, we'll meet a professional chocolatier who is a true master of this craft. How can you save time and money when you shop? Get into the habit of buying your store's store brand. You get the same quality as national brand and save at the cash register. No apps, no coupons, just money in your pocket. Give store brands a try and smile your way through the supermarket. Welcome back. Today we're going to visit award-winning Chocolat Moderne, founded in 2003, where their chocolates are not just gorgeous but delicious too. With over 100 varieties of bonbons, bars, drinking chocolates, and caramel sauces, their focus is on creating visually stunning handcrafted confections filled with perfectly balanced on-trend flavors, earning them appearances on The Oprah Winfrey Show, Food Network, and Cooking Channel. With chocolate truffles as luxe as true French champagne flavored, dusted with gold luster powder, and as exotic and elaborately decorated as the Japanese-influenced yuzu honey, shiso lime, and adzuki bean in their popular kimono collection, these truly are art to eat. Let's go chat with founder and chocolatier Joan Cacuse to learn more. Thank you so much for having us, Joan. It's my pleasure. I love talking about chocolate. Yeah, we can't wait to learn from you. So I'm really curious, and we'd all love to know at home, how did you get started making chocolates? Really, one of the catalysts, or two of the catalysts, were these two molds that you see right here. I was on a vacation on my way to Brussels, and in the in-flight magazine, I read an article about Pier Marcolini and all the amazing chocolates he was making. And this was about 20 years ago, before really fine chocolate had taken hold here. Mm -hmm. And I just said, that sounds like the coolest thing to do in the world. I cut out that article, and I said, I have to check out the chocolates in Brussels. The next day, I happened to be walking across a major square in the center of the city, and I walked through an antique market, and I saw these antique chocolate molds at a stall, and I said, this is a sign, a sign. that I should be... buy these molds and teach myself how to make chocolate, and that's what I did. Amazing, yeah, these are beautiful. When I saw them when I first came in, I wasn't sure exactly what they were for and how chocolate was made in them, so I can't, I can't wait to see how we do this. And I can't wait to show you. So, what were some mistakes you made when you were first learning the craft? This was a, a change in career for you. It was something new that you got into. What was it like learning to make chocolates? Well, I came home from that vacation and I Googled truffles. I was not even really a baker. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how chocolates were made. I didn't even know that the most important thing is to learn how to temper the chocolate, which we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. But luckily, I had the foresight to Google and I found an amazing website and I just started learning from that and just wow. experimenting at home. And I have to tell you that some of the mistakes that you make when you're just starting, you're making all the time because it is a hard material to work with. Mm -hmm. For sure, definitely. Yeah, I found it challenging sometimes. And I know people at home can have a hard time too, like you said, with tempering and with chocolate seasoning. Exactly. And we'll get a little bit more into that too. Absolutely. What are your most popular flavor combinations? And then also, what are some of the more exotic flavors that you've been putting in chocolate? Well, when I started doing this, I wanted to have a combination of classic flavors, but maybe done my own way, and also exotic, because I like to say I bring the world to chocolate. And I have to say that some of our most popular flavors are the classic ones and some of them are the exotic ones. Right. So for example, everyone loves our hazelnut praline. Everyone loves our raspberry ganache with a layer of raspberry pas de fouille, which is like jam on top. Ooh, yeah. So that's on the classic side. Mm -hmm. And of course we make salted caramels and people die for those. On the exotic side, we have uh, a Japanese assortment and we have one flavor that's brand new, it's called yuzu honey, oh. and people love that. We have another one that's called shiso lime. That's really popular too. Mm -hmm. We even have a crazy flavor in my uh, Greek assortment that's a kalamata olive caramel. Oh, how cool. And once yeah. people try it, they're not afraid of it anymore because it tastes like an interesting kind of fruity salted caramel. So how do you decide when it's time to introduce a new flavor or a new flavor collection, and what is the process like well, that's my favorite thing in the world to do and something I think about all the time and mm -hmm. something that I think about when I can't sleep at night. I'm just <laughs> always 
thinking about flavors, and I think that's one of the most uh, special and unique, th unique things about Chocolat Moderne. Some of my original flavors were inspired by some of the Greek delicacies that like my grandmother made, like we had like these candied pistachios, we had oh. candied grapefruit peel, so you know, things like that were some of my original flavors. Mm -hmm. And then I just was very interested in other cuisine, mm -hmm. and there is definitely a strong culinary aspect to really fine chocolates in terms of all the fillings. Right. I mean, they're all like little desserts. It's almost right. like, you know, pastry or something. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A lot of the same kinds of ingredients. We use, you know, purees and nuts and spices and teas and liquors and mm -hmm, everything. Mm -hmm. So I think that a lot of it starts with me sort of just imagining with certain ingredients that I really like how they would taste with chocolate. Right. How they might taste with a dark chocolate, how they may taste with a milk chocolate or a white chocolate. I was gonna say each chocolate type has its own flavor profile exactly. too, right? And then whatever you're using in the center has its own flavor profile. Totally. So as you're balancing it, do you go through like bowl after bowl of tasting and have like a, a group well, committee we, decision uh, or how do you? Originally it was just me, but now we have a group you yeah. know, tasting here. And then, you know, sometimes we do little refinements, mm -hmm. but you know, usually we get it right within a couple of a couple of tries. Right, right. No, I know when I'm creating recipes and working on flavors, sometimes you get to a point where you're like, I'm not sure if I can tell the difference between choice exactly. A and choice B and you need. And a... then sometimes we let our customers tell us. Oh, that's smart. You know, smart. they yeah. love it, we're like, okay, we'll keep it here. And I'm sure nobody's complaining yeah. about helping with the chocolate tasting. Absolutely it's kind of a not. lot of people's dream job. <laughs> totally. This is all so fascinating. So do you mind giving us a little inside peek into some of the ways that you make these gorgeous chocolates? Of course not, it's my pleasure. So now I'm gonna show you the steps that go into making this beautiful dark chocolate mm. heart that's decorated and is filled with the delicious dark chocolate ganache. First, I wanna show you that we've decorated these molds this is decorated with natural white and yellow color, and we use kind of a finger technique of just swirling. So fun, it's like finger painting to get that gorgeous design on exactly. top. Exactly, and then we actually shell the molds, because we do everything in the Belgian style of molded chocolates here. And look how nice it looks on the other side. You can see the contrast with the dark chocolate and the yellow. Looks very beautiful. And now I'm gonna show you how to make the dark chocolate ganache. So now the first step is, of course, to have your dark chocolate ready to go. And this is a very dark one. It's a 72% single origin chocolate that comes from Venezuela. And the first step is to boil cream mm -hmm. and pour it over the chocolate. And this starts the process that's called the emulsion. It's a mix of the liquid from the cream and the chocolate. The heat of the cream breaks down the fat in the cocoa butter and allows the water molecules to surround the fat molecules mm -hmm. and create like an elastic emulsion. Okay. So first you just kind of wait for the chocolate to melt a little bit and then kind of the magic happens. You know, it's a process. Everything with chocolate takes time. Everything has to be temperature controlled. So see, this is the emulsion forming. Mm -hmm. It's gonna create a silky, very satiny looking, texture. That's how you know that you, your recipe is right. You have the right amount of chocolate, the right amount of cream. You need a different amount of cream depending on how much cocoa butter is in the chocolate. Oh, the percentage fat. Like exactly. you said, the 70% the percentage or fat. Yeah. Well, this is 72% 72. cocoa content. Mm -hmm. That's not all cocoa butter. Part of it is the cocoa solids. Okay. So it's probably around 40% cocoa butter and the rest uh, cocoa solids. And then the 28%, like mm -hmm. 100 minus 72, mm -hmm. that's sugar. Right. So it takes a lot of elbow grease because there's a lot of fat in here and it all has to get broken down. But now it looks absolutely perfect. So that is done in terms of making the first step of the ganache. But now we have other steps. It's not all that easy. So here's my trusty laser thermometer that I can't live without. And I'm taking the temperature and it's 37 and a half degrees Celsius. Basically what you're looking for is you want to have softened butter mm -hmm. and you want to add the butter when your ganache is between about 35 and 39 degrees. Okay. Because butter is also an emulsion mm -hmm. and you don't want the fat in the butter to separate. Right. So now we're at a perfect temperature. We're at 37 and a half degrees. So I'm just going to add the butter in and it should be softened. This is how you make 
ganache by hand. There and are machines that do this, but we make everything by hand here. And you'd be using an immersion or a stick blender oh, right yeah. now as we well? Would be, we would be making it in a much larger container and we would be using sure. a stick blender. Could somebody use an electric mixer at home? You really want a stick blender. It's, it's made for things like this. Mm -hmm. It keeps the amount of air that gets into the recipe, you know, at a, at a minimum. Right. Cause, you know, when we're making chocolate here and we're making ganache, we're making it so that it has a little bit of a shelf life. And have, adding air is something that, you know, right. compromises the shelf life. So we're always, you know, very conscious of that when we're making things. And this, this is pretty good. Now, the last step that I'm gonna tell you about is we're gonna add a little bit of vodka to this recipe, and this is like a trick that my food chemist told me, and that's because it acts as a natural preservative, and everything we make is all natural. Right. And it doesn't really give any flavor, it's just you know a very minimal amount, I'm gonna add that next. But obviously and also, sometimes you're using other yes, liquors. Yes, that's what I was going to gonna really say. And then there are times when we use more liquor in the recipe, like we make something with scotch, we make something with bourbon, we make something with grappa. Yes. Oh, um, no. And that's when we really do cognac. I mean, mm -hmm. that's when we really want the flavor. See, now look how beautiful and smooth and velvety this looks. And I don't think I have any butter lumps. I think I got them all out. So now we're ready. We're just going to add this. This is just like an extra little step that you really don't have to do at home. Right. I mean, if you're going to do it at home, it's because you want a cognac flavored or a scotch flavored ganache. And see, it still is a beautiful smooth emulsion. The, the little bit of vodka makes it a little bit looser. And the next step is, we just want to wait maybe one more minute. Everything is time and temperature, okay? So like when you're piping, we're gonna pipe now. We don't have any machinery here. We, we hand pipe every wow, cavity yeah. of every you know, chocolate mold. And um, you don't wanna melt the chocolate that's in the mold. Right. So you have to make sure that your filling has cooled down. Mm -hmm. Right, so there's a, definitely a precision to letting it cool to oh. just the right temperature where yeah. it will still pipe, but it won't melt exactly. the coating exactly. inside the mold. And you don't, want it, you don't want to let it get too cold because then it might start separating. And if that happens, you just heat it up again. You can put this in a microwave for a few seconds, bring it up to temperature again, and, and it'll be fine. So really, knowing how to fix things is, right. very, is very key, and most things are fixable. So now I think we're ready. And I am going to try to very neatly pour this into this piping bag. And you can see, you've probably seen a lot of chefs use like plastic containers. We actually use this like champagne container cause it's nice and tall. And we're usually using large piping bags. So we need that extra length. It's a great cooking hack you guys at home. If you're filling any kind of even just a sandwich baggie or something like that to do some piping, you put it into something to hold it still. So you're not trying to kind of juggle two things at once. Okay. Julie, will you do the honors? I'm going to ask you to cut just Show me a where teeny you'd bit like off. It. Yeah, that's good. Okay. This is a very key step because if you cut the uh, hole in the bag too big, you're going to make a big mess. So now we pipe these, and normally we let we let the ganache set overnight because it is still changing over the course of a few hours. It's much better if it sets overnight, it's cooled down, a little bit of the moisture in it has evaporated, which again helps with the shelf life. Then the last step, once it's set, is to go back to the chocolate tempering machine and you know cover the backs of the chocolates. You can see that I'm leaving about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so right. below the top of the mold. And there we go. Thank you so much, Joan. So you guys, you can see how much goes into making one of these gorgeous little bonbons. So much artistry, so much precision. You can see how much goes into this. So now we are gonna go back to the studio and I'm gonna show you how to make beautiful chocolates at home. So today I'm gonna to show you how to make easy at home chocolate truffles using just a handful of things you can grab at your local supermarket. To start, you're gonna need two four ounce bars of baking chocolate. Now, make sure you go to the baking aisle for this, not the candy aisle. And you wanna get 60% cacao sweetened chocolate, not the unsweetened. So your first step is to finely chop up the chocolate 
add it to a large heat proof bowl, and then we're gonna add one tablespoon of butter. After we've added the butter, we're gonna add two thirds of a cup of heavy cream that you just heated up. Pour it over the top. Now this is the important part. You need to let it rest for five minutes before stirring to help get a smooth, rich result. So now we're gonna add a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract to flavor this. You could have fun with different other extracts like peppermint extract or even flavored liqueurs. Now we're going to stir the chocolate cream and vanilla extract together until the chocolate melts evenly and it's a glossy, beautiful result. So you just stir it until it looks like this. And by the way, you guys, if you find that your chocolate isn't melting so easily and you have like some little chunks left in there, you can just take the bowl, pop it in the microwave for like 20 to 30 seconds to help it melt. And once your ganache is ready, we're gonna transfer it from the bowl into a shallow baking pan and then just pop it in the refrigerator to cool for a bit. It's gonna make it easier to scoop and shape into truffles. So now that our chocolate or ganache has cooled a little bit, we're ready to shape them into truffles and decorate them too. So I'm wearing rubber gloves today just to keep my hands clean. If you have some, you can absolutely use them, but they're not necessary. But you will need something to scoop the chocolate with. And what I'm gonna use is a little cookie scoop. You could also use just a tablespoon measure or even just your standard teaspoon. You can really make these any size you want. So to get started, we're just gonna scoop a little bit of chocolate like this. Now we're gonna put it in the first topping is toasted chopped nuts. Just roll it around a little bit. There you go, and I'm putting them on a baking sheet lined with wax paper so that they won't stick. By the way, if you find your chocolate is a little too hard, you could just leave it out a little bit longer. If it's too soft, just pop it back in the fridge. These really are that easy. Our next topping, we've got some pretty chocolate sprinkles. You could use colored sprinkles here if you wanted. These would be really fun for a holiday or an event or a birthday party. Okay, another really fun topping is some unsweetened cocoa powder. You could do confectioner sugar if you wanted to make white colored truffles. Another really great topping idea is just a little bit of toasted coconut. So that's it, how easy is that? You just keep scooping the chocolate and shaping your truffles, line them up on the baking sheet, pop them back in the fridge again to set and keep them chilled, but they're best enjoyed room temperature. And that is it, how easy was that? And look how beautiful these are. They would be such a fun baking project for the weekend or something for a party or to gift. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Cuisine Secrets. I'm Julie Hardigan. Make sure you subscribe to our Store Brands USA YouTube channel and I'll see you next time.